Hello, this is the Frank Aldana, and welcome to NavHacks for EDIUS 7. Navigating the user interface of any NLE is something that we editors do 100% of the time. Navigation hacks, or nav hacks, are a bunch of tips, tricks, and modifications designed to streamline the navigation process and make it more efficient so you can have more time for other stuff, you know, like living and getting some sun, interacting with actual human beings, you know, that kind of stuff, the good stuff. You see, one truly awesome thing about EDIUS is its customizability. Everything from window layouts, button placement, keyboard shortcuts, even window color, you name it. All this flexibility and control makes EDIUS the perfect environment for nav hacking. So let's start off with a little user interface house cleaning. The EDIUS user interface is a very robust interface. It's also a very busy looking interface and sometimes a bit too busy. There are tons of controls and tons of information, but a lot of this is stuff that we don't use very often. So let's simplify things a little, starting with the timeline. I'm going to dig into my user settings, application, timeline, and I'm going to start off with taking out the clip thumbnail and all of the clip time codes. Once you hit apply, you'll notice that the timeline becomes instantly cleaner, leaner, and a lot less cluttered. Next, let's take on the bin window. We got a lot of stuff going on here, but again, it's a bit of an information overload. You can right click on the top of the columns and manually deselect these items, but the problem is you're going to have to do that every time you start a new project. So let's go back to our user settings and trim this down to something simpler and more useful. And what I'm going to do is to take out all of the columns except for clip name, clip color, timeline usage, and comments. I'm going to be doing this for all of the different views, including the search folder. It's a bit tedious, but you'll only have to do this once. Now, once you're done, your bin is not only streamlined, you've also turned it into a searchable database. I filled out the comments column with useful keywords for searching. You can either hit Ctrl F to bring out the search bin palette, or simply hit F3 and a search bar appears on the bottom. Just enter your keyword and you can instantly find the clips that you need. I'll type in the word soldier, and now I have all the clips that have soldiers in them. Filling out the comments with key search words can be a bit time consuming, but in the end, it will make for more efficient editing and less time rummaging your bins looking for that single bothersome clip that you so desperately need. Next, let's tidy up the program window, starting with the timecode display. Let's go to user settings, user interface, control, and I will leave only the current position and duration enabled as these are the items that I find most useful. Let's increase the font size to make it a bit more visible. If you'd look over here next to the slider is this thing, the shuttle control. The shuttle control is like the vestigial tail of nonlinear editors. It's a relic that harkens back to the good old days of analog tape based editing that went extinct in the 1990s. Okay, now let's hack this off. Go back to user settings, control, and under shuttle slider, select slider. And there you go. But if you're an old fogey like me and you feel the hankering for some old school jog shuttle action, you can right click over the preview or program window and move your mouse in a circular fashion to shuttle back and forth. Ah, now there's a sound I haven't heard since 1995. Next, let's take on the transport controls. I can't seem to recall the last time I used any of these other buttons, so I think I can live without them. We'll go to user settings, user interface, button. Okay, now let me explain how this works. This drop down menu on top lists the various places where buttons can be found on the interface. Items with player or recorder refer to the buttons on the player and recorder windows. Items with the word center refer to these transport buttons here. This item, player file center left, refers to the buttons on the left side of the play button on the player window. If it says center right, those are for the buttons on the right side of the play button. Items marked left or right refer to the buttons on the left or right side of the transport controls. 
Other items are for button rows on the bin, timeline, effect window, source browser, and the mode bar on the timeline. This column on the right lists all the currently active buttons. The left column lists the buttons that can be added. You can add buttons by dragging them from the left to the right column or by pressing this button on top. You can remove buttons by dragging them from the right to the left column or by pressing this button on the bottom. You can reorder active buttons by dragging them or by using the up-down buttons here. The category drop-down menu allows you to search for buttons according to their functions. Additionally, there is a search filter bar where you can type keywords to search for specific buttons. And I'll disable all of the transport buttons except for the play button. And we have three reasons for doing this. Reason number one, you can't take out the play button. Reason number two, with more space on your button bar, you can add a few more useful buttons like toggle zebra display or toggle rotate view. Reason number three. This is particularly useful if you are editing on a single display or on a laptop with limited screen resolution. Even with the program window scaled down, all the control buttons will still be visible. But if you truly want to go for a totally hardcore minimalist zen approach, you can go over to user settings, user interface, control, and deselect the show time code and show player recorder buttons box. Then go to buttons and proceed to disable all of the buttons and you will end up with something like this. Now all that's left to do is to change the window color to an enlightened shade of purple and now you can edit in a state of inner peace and tranquility. Repeat after me. Oh. Given the plethora of features and functions in Edius, my all-time personal favorite is this play button. Why? Because it works. And it works every single time you use it. I would even go so far as to say that it's the best play button in the history of play buttons ever. And this probably explains why the Edius logo is the play button. Okay, that's all the attention span I have for now. Tune into the next episode of Edius Nav Hacks, where we map all 653 possible functions to keyboard shortcuts. This has been your host, The Frank. Thank you for watching.